All right, gang, here we are, the testing ground, the truth, the truth the bicycle industry doesn't want you to know. We all love riding bikes. If you're watching this video, you're a cyclist like I am, and I love bikes, I love the bling, I love the carbon, I love the steel, the bamboo, I love it all. Love spending money on bikes. But what's the fucking truth, end of the day, all right? A lot of people out there think, oh, my bike's not good enough, so that's why I get dropped. That's fucking bullshit. It's because you're not good enough. And you're, you're going to get better. If you follow tips, you're going to get better. If, you're, if you've got a basic road bike and you've got the proper gearing, like compact, whatever, for the climbs, that's good enough. Is it, if your tires are pumped up to 100 PSI, and if your bike setup's half decent, someone's had a look at your bike and it's all right, and your seat hasn't slipped down, then it's good enough. Now, let's assume your bike setup's okay, your tires are pumped up. What's the difference between a five thousand dollar bike and the best carbon bike you can get? The best carbon bike on the market is a giant TCR Advanced SL. People can disagree with me, but you're still going to be wrong. That's just the best bike. Look at all the testing. So I went out. I bought the best bike you can get. Money is no object for me when it comes to bikes. I went out and built the best bike you can get. Giant TCR Advanced SL. Stiff is so light, so good. Got the wheels. What's the best wheels you can get? The lightweight Millenstein Gen Four. Got a set of them. Put them together. You've got the super light wheels, the super bling bike. And Norton Summit is my testing ground. Uh, it is a wind assisted climb, but with the power meter, you can eliminate that. So let's have a little look see, all right? I've done Norton Summit on Strava about 448 times. Probably done it a lot more than that without Strava. But now today is January 9th, 2016. I'm a TCR on the lightweight bling with the bunch, 324 watts, 30. 27, excuse me. People ask me about a police hat. I'm not a police officer, except for when your mum comes over. But this is my little hat, a bit of sunny outside. So 324 watts, 1327. The best bike you can get, January 9, 26. Now down here somewhere, well, here we go. March 19th, 2015. This is the $500 Reed Osprey. 326 watts, only extra two watts. That's some difference between ceramic pulleys there. 1338. So the difference between the best bike you can get, an absolute entry level bike, 1338, is 1327. We're talking 11 seconds. We're talking about one second per minute between the best you can get, the best you can get, the giant advanced TCR SL, the best fucking carb bike on the market, most performance oriented bike on the market, period. You can disagree with me, but you're still gonna be wrong. We're talking one second per minute. And we're talking $14,500 price tag difference or whatever. It depends on where you are in the world. So 500 bucks versus the top of the top. The S-Works Tarmac is a good bike, but the TCR is way better. I've ridden both, I know. I'm not, I'm not sponsored by either company, by the way. I'm not sponsored by anyone. Problem with sponsorship is I couldn't really tell you this if I was sponsored, could I? So I can, I can go out there. I bought these bikes with my own cash, paid the price that you could pay, and that's my honest opinion there. So... Does that mean I'm going to get rid of all my bling bikes and just ride my read? No. Because I love fucking the look of these bikes. I love the feel of them. And, and the TCA just feels so fast. But on paper, they're, they're all the same. They're not going to be faster. Okay, so one second per minute faster, which is a lot if you're a professional cyclist. That's huge. In the Tour de France, that's fucking big. But for the weekend warriors like us, even on Strava's, I mean, my TCR is my Strava bike. When every second counts, the TCR gets rolled out. Otherwise, the read is definitely good enough. So there you go. If, if you're wondering why you're getting drops, it's not because of your bike. Because all you're losing between the $500 bike and the fifteen, the two best of the best is about one second per minute. One second per minute. That's fuck all, isn't it? For us. There you go. And just as proof, people might... Oh, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Yep. Yep. Little bluey. What's that? No. And this was the day I did that. Five hundred dollar bike review. Reed Osprey. Uh, sorry. This is a, this is the one we did. We did the Thursday. Reed Osprey Norton Summit TT. The tires I got were from the bike shop bin. Hard rubbish. An old Michelin Pro and a Victoria Corsa. So going from the bin. So I've got tires in the bin. That was safe enough. Obviously, I checked them. Bin tires, five hundred dollar breed. All right, <laughs> slap the power meter on there. Boom. The most important thing you can have on your road bike is a power meter. All right, so don't worry about carbon wheels and all this stuff. 
Combat cranks, power meter. That's that's all you need in terms of upgrades. People, again, people can disagree with me, but they're still going to be wrong. So then the question is, why the fuck would you spend big bucks on a bike then, Duran Rider? Because it's art. It's fucking it's usable art. You can spend big bucks on some porcelain portrait painting whatevers. And that's your money. Do whatever you want. But for me, the bicycle, you can hang shit up on the wall. Bicycle is art. And that's a piece of art you can have on the wall... And you can take off the wall and ride to the shop, ride to pick up your kids, ride out your mates, go ride by yourself, whatevs. The site, the bicycle is art. So when you're spending big bucks, you're basically getting better art. And in terms of uphill performance, there's, there's one second per minute. From the from the entry level Osprey to the best of the get, you can get carbon bike, the giant TCR Advanced SL. From the, from the bottom line entry to the top. You're getting one second per minute from the best to the 7,000 on all the wheels. But how can you afford all this stuff? I don't have kids. That's a big income uh, expenditure. Children, for sure. I don't have kids. I can't afford it. Well, you just got to be better with your money or be more wise what you do for occupation. Anyway, let's not digress. That's where your performance is coming from is you, your red blood cell count, your glycogen retention, sugar, water, sleep, seat height, basic things like that. Bike fit close enough is good enough. Make sure you've got the cadence so you can hit at least 90 cadence on your favourite climb. If you can't hit 90 cadence when you're going full gas, then you should put some easier gears on your bike. I'm talking for your favourite climb, the one you love most to do. If you can't hit 90 cadence, put some easier gears on your bike so you can get the cadence that Chris Froome is doing. Team Sky are doing it. If they can't hit cadence, they change their cranks, they change their chain rings, cassettes or whatever. So they can hit at least 90 cadence on the ramps, steep stuff. So there you go. Uh, if you spend more money on a bike, what what is the benefit? Besides art, braking can be better. There's a big difference between hydraulic disc brakes now and some basic $20 Tektro calipers, I agree. So the more money you spend on brakes, you'll get better performance. Uh, Shifting-wise, there's not much difference between mechanical Sora and electronic Durace 9070. I have three of the latest Durace DI2 Shimano, uh, sorry, Durace group sets. I have three of them now. And the difference between that and the Sora, it's better, it's more precise, more surgical, but it's still good enough. The Sora is still great stuff. Braking though, the disc brakes, hydraulics for sure, just more consistent, less hand fatigue. Uh, Everesting for sure, disc brakes to go for that. Other than that, you're getting better steering on uh, the giant overdrive too, just a bit more pinpoint accuracy. Alloy steerer, it also is stiffer than a carbon steerer. Giant Overdrive 2 steering is incredible on those bikes. But again, there's still guys that flog me on any rusty old crap down a hill because they just got better skill and they're prepared to take bigger risks than I am on a downhill. So steering better, steering bike. Meh. Uphill performance though, that's where you're getting no real gains up in one second. If, you, if you're Chris Froome, that matters. If you're pro, that matters. For us, me and you, it doesn't matter unless it's on Strava. Then it matters. Braking, you're going to get the biggest gains. Comfort-wise, these carbon bikes can be really like this. This TCR is a race machine, but it's very comfortable relative to what it, what, how light it is. And um, that's about it. That's about it. So post down below what other bikes would you like to see in the review. I mean, there's no real point in me buying any more bikes, is it? Because I've just I've just proven that, that this experiment cost me fifteen thousand dollars or whatever it did, and you just saved yourself fourteen thousand dollars. So if you give me five thousand bucks, we'll call it even. Then what do you think? I think that's a fair deal. Let us know down below what else we can do videos on. This is just game over. We can all just go home and pack our bags and it's, it's, it's finished the, 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 the discussion is over oh you want a better bike you beat me uh, if it's one second per minute faster then it's the bike if it's less than one, uh, if it's more than one second faster it was me if it's less than one second it was the bike there you go done